Hello, today I want to tell you about a time in nursing school when I did not handle things the right way when I had a big, I think it was a big disagreement with one of my professors. Hello, my name is Nicole Whitworth. I am the founder of Your Nursing Tutor and I help nursing students get through nursing school confidently and calmly. And today we're going to talk about what you can do when you disagree with a professor about the answer to a test question and what you can do if how you should handle it which is not the way I handled it <laughs> in order to try to get the best resolution possible. So I was taking a community health course and generally speaking I was one of the better students in the class which is why they had hired me that my nursing program hired me as a tutor while I was in the nursing program. So I was tutoring my classmates and I was in an accelerated BSN program and uh, I was also tutoring students from the ADN program, which my school also offered. So sometimes I would even be sent students that were ahead of me in the program because they were doing the associate's degree track. Um, and so I was finding that I could successfully tutor them. So I was pretty proud of myself. I was pretty confident in my test taking ability and I had a pretty good relationship with the professors. Uh, there had been several times where I'd advocated for my classmates and myself and even some of the ADN students at various times when things had uh, come across that weren't very fair and when uh, sometimes they were, their grades were a little borderline, let's say. And so they were sometimes hesitant to approach their professor when they had um, a disagreement or didn't think something was being graded fairly or being treated fairly. And they were afraid of some backlash. Now I'm not saying that would have actually happened, but it's a legitimate fear, right? You never know. And you don't wanna uh, wait until there's some subjective grading, say with your clinical exam or something like that to find out that the professor was kind of offended and you fail, okay? So this day in community health, I, we were going over our test, uh, a test, and there was a question about crisis. Now, according to my community health textbook, which I don't have on me now, but I remember this, I will never forget this. <laughs> a crisis, according to community health, in the context, uh, is when your resources um, are not enough to um, cover the event that you're experiencing. So whatever it is that you're going through, it exceeds your resources. And that'll, this will make sense in a minute. So there was a, one of the multiple choice NCLEX style questions that I had gotten wrong and I was convinced I got it right. And I will never forget the two alternatives. <laughs> um, it's, the question was, which of these scenarios uh, is an example of a, a family or client in crisis. And one of the answer choices was a family where the, their, child, their young child had died and they were receiving family therapy um, as a result. The other option was something along the lines of a family who had uh, lost their home in a fire and was feeling um, experiencing feelings of depression while they were living in a hotel. So I chose the homeless family feeling depression because that meant that their experience exceeded their resources. They were having the negative uh, effects of depression. They didn't have a permanent place to live. They did have a roof over their head, but because there was also depression in there, it just seemed like that's a crisis according to the de definition of community health. However, my professor, said that it was the family that whose child had died. And her rationale was because there's nothing worse than having your child die. Now, that she's not wrong, okay? She's not wrong. But that's not what an NCLEX style question is supposed to be about. And to this day, I will stand by my answer that I was correct, <laughs> that it was the homeless family because um, no, but no matter how much I pointed in the textbook at the definition and explained how the definition met the criteria for the homeless family, but not the family whose child, whose child had died because they were receiving appropriate treatment and getting help for their crisis for what they had gone through. So it was no longer a crisis for them. Um, she would not change her mind. And maybe I was used to getting my own way because <laughs> I don't know, but right in the middle of class in front of all my classmates, I got in an argument with her 
um, over this test question and would not give it up to the point that I could tell she was getting irritated. And finally, I just shut my mouth and sat down. That was not the most respectful thing to do. Uh, and later, I did go to her after class and I apologized for being disrespectful. I did not apologize for uh, arguing and disagreeing with her because I still think she was wrong and I was right. But I should not have approached her that way in class, arguing in front of everybody. I should have approached her after class when it became clear that we were not going to agree immediately in class. So the moral of the story is be respectful to your professors, even when you disagree, even when they're wrong. I never did get points for that particular question, but because I was a solid student, uh, it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And besides, I did learn a valuable lesson um, about working as a colleague, even as a student. You know, I was gonna be a nurse someday. I'm a nurse now, she's my colleague. And so being able to work out those disagreements in a respectful way is very important. And it's a good skill to practice. Um, it's good to be assertive when you think you're right, but even if you can't reach an agreement, you still have to have a respectful working relationship. So I hope that helps you. And you can look for more tips at yournursingtutor.com and find all the free resources that I offer. And I hope I will see you around the website. Take care.